all it ever does is run now. Thank you. Here, thank you so much. So, um, so it turns out that the most sacred holy thing in religion saying something like I'm an expert is the names of God. Some of them are revealed, some of them are treasured, some of them will come when the next, whatever we want to call it, occurs. The next revelation, the next uh, manifestation, whatever we want to call it. There's nothing more sacred, more holy, than the name of God. Now, we're all of these religions. But when they translated them into English, the translators, they did it out of pure heart to teach us. But they were not knowledgeable. They had not been inspired on the mysticism of the precise mystic intonation, how to say the name of God. That buried throughout every verse in the scriptures was a discussion. The, the letter B, in the, word, the word for glory in Aramaic is Baha. Its superlative case is Abha. The letter B is not a bilabial stop. It becomes a plosive, like in the trumpet. The scriptures have embedded in them a mystical treatise on how to say the name of God so that you can have the apex of consciousness because the brain is an antenna. It transmits and receives. Our goal in life is to have inspiration and illumination and divine guidance. Of course we're supposed to learn the laws in the scriptures. Of course we're supposed to learn the practices, prayers. But the mysticism, the name of God, was considered only for the very special people, the elect people. In fact, the ones who knew about it were worried that the generality of mankind thousands of years ago would desecrate it. So it wasn't even shared with the general population, deliberately. Why did I tell you all this? Because they did not count in numbers then. Their alphabet was their numbers. It was called abjad numerical notation. What I am saying then is that the name of God is not only a numerical pattern based on the syllables and the consonants, but it's also a sine wave. It's also a 3D geometric shape, which is the torus. We've heard that all roads lead to Rome. Not anymore. All roads lead to the torus. It is the archetypal shape in the, of the universe. Why? Because it dissipates heat. Because it takes heat from the core, dissipates it into the outer environment called the ergosphere, before it returns back in at the top. Because stars and planets, when they're sucked into a major vortice at the center of the Milky Way, which is a, known to be a black hole, all mass, all matter is the waste coolant medium to, to take heat away from the core. And in the middle of the Milky Way, it's taking solar systems, it's sucking them in, it's bathing the whole, the core with them, planets, stars, and it shoots them out the other side in a hot juice, hot um, plume of gaseous matter that goes billions of light years through the solar system. The size and proportion we can't even comprehend. Okay? But everything's about Refrigeration, heat dissipation, everything is thermal. Numbers occur. Numbers are real. Nature is expressing herself with, num with numbers. Because when spirit tangentially, because spirit comes from the idea of the Taurus, when it pierces the Taurus skin, 
a number is created. It's a thermal process. This is, we have to stay approximately 10 degrees within 100 degrees. We have to have a constant temperature or we'll perish at, or uh, exterminate. A black hole has to maintain a constant temperature or it would disintegrate. You'll never hear anybody saying that. I hope I don't hurt the mic thing sitting on it. Battery pack. So this is a dream catcher. It's also a, a, a simple view of a torus. Let's say top down or bottom up because the hole's in the middle. So that means that if the, because the torus has an axis in the center, that hole is vertical. See, a torus is not symmetrical on all axes because of the fact that you have the hole, the funnel, going through the center. Now, if that hole wasn't there, see that hole? It would self-destruct because the word for that hole is well, like a wishing well. The word for that hole, it, if it didn't have that hole, it wouldn't be enjoyable. Because the word for that hole is it's a funnel. Are you having fun? Our whole nomenclature of our language is based on that hole. Hole, H-O-L-E, hole, W-H-O-L-E. Uh, this is where the missing zero is. Because I have your attention, I'm going to tell you the solution to pi. It turns out that hole wouldn't exist if you bisected a circle, as they try to do in pi. You did a cross section, because you'd be going through the hole. Nothing goes through the hole. The hole's like the aperture of our eye. Everything goes around the hole, and the hole, it goes around the lip of the hole. The hole deflects everything, because anything with mass, anything with matter, including light, processes and warps. There is no straight line through this circle. So what happens is, it's the circle of fifths. The hole is defined by going in spires. You can only bisect a circle by going in spires. I, I'd like to explain it, but I won't try to go into too long into the, into the uh, multiplication series of it at this moment. So what happens, though, is each, today in math, the compass, the ruler, we're only worried about our house, our foundation, our bubble and our level. That's not how the universe works. That's called a rigid rule line, a standard ruler. It doesn't work. Every unit between 1 to 2 to 4 to 5 expands and contracts like an accordion. There is nothing, because everything warps in this universe, that is vertical. There is nothing that is horizontal. It's not made out of squares. It's made out of diamonds. OK? From diamonds, you get spirals. I'll continue. So. I have discovered, based on the inverse square law, an elastic ruler. Now, when you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in a ruler, you don't think of it in these terms, but your control is multiples of 1. And that ruler is a multiplication series. The biggest mistake done in mathematics is to put before that 1 a 0. Zero is not in a multiplication series, and zero is not on a number line. All right. I need an assistant, please. Uh, Stephen, would you help me? OK. So. Getting. This is about the worst thing I could ever do in my life because it's so harmless that, any, that it, I won't get in trouble. 
This is a sparkler, right? I'm putting the sparkler in the center. That emanation, those straight lines, we call the dandelion puff principle. The dandelion puff principle, OK? Because spirit is omnidimensional. It gives feedback to the center. It's literally, you could call it the all-seeing eye of God, those emanations. They're like God's neurons. They're linear, and they don't bend. They pierce through the holes, and based on the phasing, the activation sequence, it creates all mathematics, and it creates, I better not do the uh, fire alarm, right? <laughs> So what happens is those spokes are the spokes of this wheel, the spokes of spirit. Again, it's all linguistics. And they're traveling in a straight line. Now, I know which number goes where but I'm not going to try and do it. So what is the vortex-based mathematics? It is two discoveries. One was the, thank you, Stephen, this funny VW symbol, which you haven't seen yet. And the other is putting one number per tile so you can map the pathway of superconductivity. Now, superconductivity we normally think of as being electricity. Uh, another adjective for superconductivity is superfluidity, because any continuous medium can superconduct or be superfluid. Water, because you know that they all make the same shape the faster they accelerate. Take, for instance, the skin effect of electricity. We know that it makes micro vortices. Take, for instance, a water funnel or a tornado or a hurricane. They can be made out of air. They can be made out of water. We have the solar system going into a funnel. OK? Everything follows the same pathway. It's just a matter of whether you can see it the scale, where you're looking at, whether you're in the forest and you, can only, you, can't, you can't see the forest through the trees. It's, it's scalable. It was never known until recently, and I predicted this when I did my original book on this, which was aerodynamics. I called it the dandelion puff principle, point energy creation physics. It wasn't ever known that quantum effects could occur on a large scale. They were only thought to be on an atomic scale, on a micro scale. Today, it's normal to have quantum results on a macroscopic level. In the workshop, after we take our break tonight, I will show you, because I, I won't even dare try and jump into it right now, how, how everything scale, scales quantumly from micro to macro as a hologram. And so, the tiles here that you're seeing, I need you again, please. These are tiles. They're diamonds, not squares. They get widest on the outside, the equator. This is called the OD. See how the axis changed? But as they go into, and by the way, the pathway that they follow is this way, diagonally. Nothing goes through the corners. Everything can only go through the sides. And it's really two things superimposed. In reality, it's a, it's a river's bed. And I'm going to explain more about this, go, this going through the side, because everything warps and processes. But as it gets closer to in, and goes into the funnel and the well of the vortex, the axis changes from horizontal to vertical. OK, keep holding it. Why do I want to hold it? Because this because I can't hold two at once. This is a crystal. See all the little crystals? I'm going to use this a couple times in my explanation because there's some properties here that are very important. This is a crystal. Everything that we just saw in Greg's presentation is a crystal. All mathematics is a crystal. Every one of these facets are aimed at the core. Because the emanation is causing all these mirrors. They're just mirrors. When we go to the beach, we sit on the, at the front of the waves, a couple of feet from the water, 
and it's a moonlit night, and we look out over the ocean, it's called the Sea of Lanterns, because we see 76,000 lanterns, little moons, reflecting from the waves. These are all mirroring. This is the sun, and these are all the mirrors around it, reflecting its light. Everything worships God, whether it knows it or not. I'm worship based in the world and, the, and based in the nature of how it was created. In the world of matter of mass, the symbol of God is the axis. The sim- mathematical number for God is the prime squared, 9, 26, uh, 9, 25, 49, 111. Everything prostates, everything points to God, the transfer transfiguration of the face of the all-merciful. Everything points to the face of God. Hard to believe it. It's the craziest thing in the world. A crystal is perfect. What I have found is, thank you, is mathematical perfection. I have, I'm able to prove that there is such a thing as fixed constants, and absolutes. The math that I've discovered is not just the most predictive math in the world, but it's literally the ideal from which then everything else is compared and it's the divine standard. Hey, I'm going to go to another topic now, quickly. Um, Because I bet I'm almost out of time. Hertek wrote this. In it, he put a a symbol, a a numerical pattern in it. Professor Scott Nelson, University of Hawaii, plant pathology, brilliant man. He he got a diploma in vortex-based mathematics. And he wrote the paper, Philotaxis Prime Number Sieve, because his specialty is plants, biology. And he was able to um, show that each nut, though, each sprout on the plant predicts a prime. That's another topic. He also did a discovery, it was um, based on uh, the Seal of Solomon and the Great Pyramid. After reading Hertek's book, he took that numerical pattern out of this book about uh, these rivers or these streams of light that Hertek saw. And he built it out using vortex-based mathematics and it made a pyramid, which blew me out of the water because I, my specialty is the Taurus. In this pyramid, it was made out of these same circuits that come in pairs. We, I call them Mobius circuits. So I'm mentioning Hertek's book. Oh, this is the book that Science of Sage published, Karen Elkins. And uh, there's only 10 left. And she lost so much money on sending the, We found out the hard way. If you send them um, book rate, you, if they don't get delivered or lost, you don't get refunded. <laughs> so. She, so I'm charging her 150, which is all for her to keep, and she'll still be in the red. But this is explaining, there are your circuits right there. There are the underpinning nested vortices. There's the shear. It's called the electron harmonic shear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of resistance. I'm going to get rid of resistance in the conductor without using rubber or shellac. I know it's too hard to see it, but this is um, loaned to us. All these books aren't mine. They all go back. Everything goes back to their owners. They just lent them for this presentation. Thank you. So this, has a, this is a torus that has a cutting edge and a trailing edge. In con- conventional electromagnetic engineering, it's ba- you get so much magnetism based on so many wraps, so many turns of the coil. And they w- typically wind the winding side by side. But the, the schematic that I found, based on this math, I'm just following the math and the geometry, is that you, you don't wind side by side. And they have to put shellac and rubber to insulate the conductor. What this math says is about, about winding in spires, which is a star. And you travel dozens of times around before you ever go side by side to the conductor. What, and you lay it up after going around in spires, you create an electron harmonic shear. 
and there's a number for it. And that number never changes. So it, the, what I'm bringing is a whole different winding pattern. And it's in, it's in pairs. And the two conductors, you see the space right here in the middle? See the hole? See the hole? That's the gap space. This is 124875 this way, 124875 that way. This is 396693. Tesla said if you figured out, knew the, the significance of 3, 6, and 9, you would have the key to the universe. 9's in the center of 3, nine, six, three and 6. 3 and 6 can never touch. It's 3, 9, 6, 6, 9, 3. This is the higher dimensional flux field. If you learn and you never put anything there, you leave it empty. The conductors are, are, are on this, each side of it. <coughs> um, you're going to be seeing the 3, 9, 6. Everyone here could be the next Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, because this 396, 693 obsoletes all existing technology, all, all processors, all transistors, everything, if you know how to make it right. So I, things that I'm done showing, I'll put over here, over here, over here. I want to thank Steve Ellswick for my, be, all of us being his guest. I want to say uh, greetings to Michael Riversong, who ascended a while back, who used to always come and, and grace us. Um, I want, who else? Um, Steve has a YouTube channel, and his income is derived from us subscribing to it. And, and it's actually, um, is um, the finest names. He has the biggest video collection. He also got Global Sciences uh, video collection. I hope uh, maybe someday uh, they'll all be together uh, from like Psychotronics. They have a great video collection. All the best speakers of the last 50 years. Um, and so Steve is, uh, has all these different speakers and has the best video library. And that's why you subscribe to his channel. And Steve is Tesla Tech. Okay, so I mentioned that. And so how do you get to Tesla Tech? How does he do it? Page four. I'm on page four. You go to, uh, yeah, uh, no, teslatech.info. Teslatech.info. Okay. Toby recommended this book. I haven't read it. But everything's about how coil, if it wasn't for coils, we wouldn't have lights in here right now. Westinghouse, GE, whoever's doing it, you have, it's, everything's dependent on coils. Our bodies call this mortal coil. Anyway, it's all about, ultimately, to take um, I borrowed this book from APEC, Alternative Propulsion Engineering Conference, um, August 13th. 2022, tomorrow. So the, the flyer's on the table in there. They have a bookshelf. I have five minutes. So electromagnetic uh, metamaterials, transmission line theory, microwave applications, everything's about um, how to control these flux fields. Today we know of the fields, the three and six. The numbers three and six represent the fields. These three and six are poles. Three, do, the, three and six are always one or the other. They're, they look like a duality, but they can never touch. Three doubled is six, six doubled is 12, but one plus two equals three. 12 doubled is 24, six. 24 doubled is 48, is 12 equals three. 48 doubled is 96, uh, 96, which equals 15, which equals six. Three and six always oscillate, but they, have at the, they never touch at the base. But at the nine, where they do touch, um, it's the third invisible component. The minimum parts of anything is three. So here's Maury King's book, Quest for Zero Point Energy, that's in the library. Hi, Maury. Here's Beyond, Beyond Einstein's Unified Field, so we all know that he who figures out the secret of it, it's not 369, it's 396, 693, will know the secret of everything. 
Um, I, I'm going to finish show, uh, show and tell so I can get to my presentation. This was revealed in two days and two nights. It's called the Kitabi Khan, the Book of Certitude. It deals with progressive revelation. At the end, it says, um, revealed by the Ba and the Ha, peace be upon him who inclineth his, his the ear. Um, uh, unto the melody of the mystic bird calling from the tree beyond which there is no passing. It's called the Sarato Mantaha. Glorified be our Lord the Most High. The Ba and the Ha, we use the BH curve to model magnetism. B is compression, H is decompression. The Aleph is the number one, which, is, um, which I'm going to have to go into later on, but I'm going to skip it for one second. This is called the Hidden Words. Um, it's a Baha'i book. It's 153 paragraphs, and it begins in the name of the Lord of Utterance, the Mighty. Everything's always created by the name. And thus, every pattern, it's, everything's reticulated by the name of God. Okay, so that does my show and tell. Um, I think I can. Let me see before we break. So I'm giving a workshop. It's going to be, um, it's going to be, I, I'll tell you what you're going to, I'm going to describe it into a few parts. The main part, there's going to be two parts. The fir first part's going to be a little difficult, because I'm going to um, read a few quotes. There's nothing more difficult than listening to somebody read. And then I'm going to go to the interactive whiteboard, and I'm going to teach you your multiplication tables. I'm going to show you that um, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm going to turn it from square to diamonds. And I'm going to show you that everything's focused at the center. The end result.